Welcome to our very first Accurex keynote on total triage models. If you don't currently have any Accurex uh, products at your practice, feel free to reach out to partnerships at accurex.com or head over to www.accurex.com forward slash patient dash triage to sign up for a three month free trial. So my name is Mahir. I work in the marketing team here at Accurex. We've got Dr. Johan Byron, who's a guest speaker here today, joining us from Crouch Hall Road Surgery. Thank you so much for joining us. And we've also got Margaret. Uh, who's one of our GP clinical leads here at Accurate. So we're going to be talking to you about what total triage is, how you can implement that at your practice. We'll then talk about how Accurate can support you with total triage models using our support and training and features. We'll go through a demo today, um, an interactive demo, which I'll then be able to share out via a, a link in a follow-up email shortly. And that way you can also play around with the features yourself. And finally, we'll end it with a Q&A on total triage where um, you'll have the opportunity to ask your questions down below in the Q&A section. Um, feel free to post some questions in there. We also have some of the Accurex team in the room who will be answering those questions via the chat. So keep an eye out for any questions answered that way. Um, so let's just get started. I, I guess first question for Dr. Johan. Uh, do you mind just giving a little bit of an introduction to yourself and your practice and when you maybe started first using Accurex? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm a GP partner at Crouch Hall Road at Crouch End. We're about eight and a half thousand patients. Uh, we implemented uh, total triage a year ago with Accurex. Um, so April 2022. Uh, and I work with a fantastic team of GPs, receptionists and clinical pharmacists. We're really integral to making this a success and making it work. Um, I think really the my responsibility as a partner within Crouchful Road over the last year has been implementing total triage, implementing Accurex specifically as our pre preferred solution, and then actually just iterating that model as we've gone through. So that involves kind of listening to the team, understanding what the pain points are, and addressing those quickly and coming up with good solutions, as well as hearing what the patient's concerns are, and trying to make sure that the solution that we're using really addresses the needs of the patient without extra steps being involved. I'm also a PCN clinical director. So more recently, it's been supporting other practices. And I think they're, they're joining us today with either implementing ActorX or really working through and talking through their problems as well. That's great. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and give your uh, insight into the whole world of total triage. And now, Margaret, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do here at ActorX? Yeah, of course. Um... So I'm also a GP um, and I joined Accurex about uh, five months ago. Uh, so as, as a GP at Accurex, what I do is I'm a subject matter expert, which means I try and influence the products that Accurex are making to make them the most useful products for um, whatever setting that we're going into. So in this context, we're going to about general practice. I, have, I also have a really big role thinking about clinical safety, so making sure that our products are safe to use, thinking about any implications if things weren't to work as expected. Um, within the company, there's also a big role around healthcare awareness and so making sure we're all up to date with what's going on in the NHS and the, in the wider landscape of health. Um, and yeah, apart from that, I also still work as a GP and I uh, do some work with our local ICS uh, in South East London around quality improvement work. And I've also formerly been a key thinking director. Great. So very busy. Busy girl. <laughs> cool. So total triage, what is it then? Well, our team have done a lot of research on different ways that practices manage their patient inbound. And we're quite familiar with total triage models of working. We've come across loads of practices that have used that model and they're using it really well. Uh, you've likely heard of this term before. I mean, it's been about for a couple of years now. You might have also more recently heard about modern general practice access. These models largely have one goal in common, which is to manage patient access and demand more efficiently. I'm going to illustrate the traditional general practice model using the story of a patient called Samar. So Samar, when trying to contact her practice, has options to walk in or call. Um, that tends to lead to an 8 a.m. rush if everyone's kind of calling at the same time once the practice immediately opens leading to a poor patient and staff experience. I mean, no one really wants to be on the phone for hours right at the beginning of the day. The traditional model often involves running multiple systems in parallel. So that means the process of record keeping through phone requests, for example, might be very different to the way you record requests from walk-in uh, patients. So that, so that means patients might be triaged or signposted inappropriately, allocating resources that aren't necessarily the right care for this patient. So if Samar doesn't 
receive the appropriate level of care, she often needs to repeat that entire exercise of contacting the practice again, and then having to go through that experience. Both the practice staff and the patient doesn't enjoy it. So Margaret, why do you think we're hearing more about total triage recently? Um, is, is this model that we've got on screen right now accurate for all practices or is it uh, that it may sort of resonate with some more than others or just aspects might resonate with yeah, different practices? I think that's a really good question. So I think at the, at the moment, um, this model represents what happens in a lot of practices, but not all. So every practice has sort of different models based on their size, what staff they have, what their patient cohorts are. And some practices have already been trying to find ways to sort of uh, deal with this access issue that's been going on for the last couple of years. So some practices are, are getting closer to sort of sort of cracking it um, so the reason why we're hearing about um, total triage is because it's very topical mm. uh, and the reason why it's topical is because there's been a lot of changes in the GP contract lately so there's this whole thing around trying to offer patients an assessment that need at first presentation mm. and I think we really recognize now that this sort of traditional model doesn't really allow us to do that well yeah. so I think it's really important that we have this day to sort of delve into why total triage model can solve these issues. Dr Johan do you have any comments on that? I do. I think whilst we go through this, really, I want everybody to kind of think about a few things and a few principles just to see how well those principles or this solution really kind of adopts to those principles. So firstly, looking at the traditional model, when a patient would phone up, they would recognise the voice, the receptionist, you know, be it Barvin, Veronica, uh, Amanda at our practice. And there's benefits to the traditional model. Patients have familiarity. There's something that they're calling because they're concerned with. So Obviously, having that familiar voice at the other end of that name is something that someone that they could trust. So I just want to say that those are benefits of it. I think the problem isn't that that model doesn't work anymore. It's just that we're, we're struggling to manage the demand. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. So going forward, we know that we're struggling with the demand. The current model doesn't suit the demand that we're seeing. So do we have a solution going forward? And does everybody who implements Accurex or wants to, are they able to retain the principle of familiarity? or that soft intelligence. So if we had a patient that we know is particularly vulnerable, mm -hmm. but it's not obvious from their query that they're vulnerable, maybe it's a safeguarding issue that you know about or the patient's called three times already today. So does our solution, does Accurex, allow you to still utilize that familiarity, that soft intelligence, but in a new way? And I think that's important to think about as we go through this presentation. I think um, probably number two as well is that if you look at the demand across the week, you know, Mondays are very busy, Fridays are very busy before the weekend, the day after a bank holiday is very busy. Previously, we used to deal with it on a first come first serve basis. And when capacity was complete, it was, was completely gone and utilized, then we had no ability to deal with any of the urgents that might come in later on. And so being able to see everything that comes in on a Monday is fantastic because it means you're able to what they call demand smooth. So smooth that demand through the week which is really important for us. So we can pick on a Monday morning when there are 250 requests that come in, we're able to pick the top 10% that are urgent, deal with them so they're not going to A&E, deal with them with a clinician that's familiar with their case. And then we can move the other cases further down the week or to the next week if they're routine issues. So that works well for the patient. It works well for us trying to deal with the urgent and so not having to, to fit someone in at 6.29 in the evening when we're about to go home. I think, why does it work well for practices and practice managers in particular? Well, it's always really difficult to recruit a locum on a Friday. It's really difficult to recruit extra locums on a Monday. And the traditional model used to be that we used to pay over the odds for locums on particular days of the week. And sometimes, quite honestly, they may not suit the style of the practice that you're trying to deliver or the service you're trying to deliver. So now what you're able to do with demand smoothing is you're able to recruit GPs to work the days that they want to work. So you're able to staff sufficiently and not be so subject to, you know, rising locum costs and staff costs. So it helps from a, yeah. a management perspective as well. Yeah, for sure. And that really nicely brings us to our next slide where we actually talk about what total triage entails and how you can use Accurex to uh, actually implement a total triage model at your practice. So total triage in a nutshell basically is a needs-based uh, triage workflow. This workflow that you see on the screen now has been inspired from NHS England guidance and it supports the models that uh, Margaret spoke about, such as the modern general practice model, total triage, and most importantly, the recent GP contract. With Accurex, you can meet all of these and benefit from the integrated features that you know and love. 
as well as funneling all of your inbound into one interface for improved demand management. Now, if we come back to the story of Samar, our patient, if she was to come and use this model, uh, with total triage, digital access would be promoted and practices often find most requests come through this way. Patients can still walk in or call and the practice will still be able to accept and record requests from those patients in exactly the same way using a feature with an accurate called reception flow. And I'll talk about that in a, a little bit later on. Practices can also encourage the patient to go online and complete the form themselves or educate them on how to access the, the GP. And this all supports timely and appropriate care navigation and equity of access. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, Johan, that Accurex can help you flatten the ATM rush and make the experience better for practice staff and patient needs. And in this example, if we were to talk about Samar going through this funnel, um, you will see that she will likely have her care needs appropriately met because there are additional follow-up uh, options for your patient using Accurex features such as self-book or flurries, which are patient questionnaires. Um, and that just means that timely care can be delivered to that patient. So a question for you, Dr. Byron, then is uh, when did you move to total triage and what do you think the main benefit is? I know you discussed some benefits already, but like, what would you say is your ultimate benefit then? So uh, probably two phases. So we moved to total triage probably. So before we moved to accurate patient triage, so we tried to adopt the model of total triage with our previous solution, which was e-consult. And uh, the, the benefits of total triage were that actually we'd be able to know what was coming before uh, to, to, before we started the consultation, we we're able to risk stratify, so we're able to do the urgents before the non-urgents, and therefore we're dealing with that at the top of the day. Why? Hospitals are open, ambulatory care is open, you're able to deal with urgents when you need to. What were the problems with using alternative products? And I, I probably shouldn't name it, the others, but, um, well, we had things in different boxes. So when you had, you know, an e-consult coming in on an online form, when reception, when someone would walk in and they'd be on, they'd be on a different list. And when you have a lot of queries in different boxes, the margin of error of missing something becomes even greater. You get different levels of detail. So we used to have an online form that people would fill in and it was very, very detailed. But actually, if you look at the step before that, patients wouldn't fill out the form because it was so long. It was so cumbersome. So compliance with that was really poor. Cool. And pa patients will find a, a way to game the system in a sense. So you know, if they filled out the form and said go straight to A&E, they'll change the details and just to get a way of creeping into the system. Um, and I don't blame them for doing that because they don't need to go to A&E. They do need to see us, but the product's telling them to go elsewhere. So after going to Total Triage, what we really quickly realised was that we needed a platform that suited us. So we needed one platform where we just need to check one box. Anybody can check one box. So a receptionist, a clinical pharmacist, GP can check one box. All the queries there were coming in. So everything was presented in the same format. Um, so, you know, the presenting complaint, the expectations, is it urgent, is it not urgent, what the, you know, what the disposition is, telephone call, text and whatever. And that needed to be the case. That same format needed to be the case, regardless of whether they filled out the form themselves, whether they uh, phoned and whether they came in face to face. I think one of the biggest issues at this point, and a lot of the kickback that we said about adopting digital technology and online forms from our patient groups, as well as my GP colleagues, was that, you know, online forms and online access, digital access isn't available to everybody. And I said, well, the point that we're trying to implement and push this is to improve access, not for those that can use online tech, but for those that can't. And what we saw was a measurable reduction in telephone calls, a measurable reduction in wait times. So those patients that can't use the online form now have a shorter wait time on the phone. And they've also got less of a queue in order to get through to us. So that was the biggest, uh, the kind of the biggest improvement straight away. I think probably the second to that is now we're a year and a half into using Accurex as our solution. And we've noticed from the very beginning, our processes have changed. So the way that we as clinicians deal with Accio, with triage and patient queries has changed and evolved over the year and a half. And the one thing that, you know, sold us when, you know, I'm talking to partners and practice managers that are decision makers for tech here uh, and what you implement. You want to use a solution that will change with you as your processes change. And no doubt over the last year and a half, we've had to change our processes for the demands of the system. And the only constant or the only thing that you're going to be assured of is that things will change in the next five years. So the technology you want to adopt now 
you want to know is going to change with you as the demand changes and how as your process changes to practice that's great Can I just ask the question yeah of course I think it's really important for just to highlight like what we're not talking about here is opening another channel yeah. so a lot of um, practices they use Accurex they use other online solutions but it's another channel so it's telephone walk in another channel something else and it's like very very difficult to manage that because like Johan says you don't have the benefit of having all your requests in one place they're all scattered in different places so I think it's really important for us just to emphasize what we're talking about here is having a solution where everything is in the same place so that based on your resources you can decide which requests that you need to deal with more urgently yeah. and that the people that can't use the digital access they have a way to also get their needs met because there's now staff available to deal with them. Thank you so much for that insight, guys. So what is patient triage? So Accurex Patient Triage is our online consultation solution. We built it in 2020 to improve patient access and practice experience. Currently, over 2,000 practices across the nation use patient triage to better manage their inbound. We'll go through an interactive demo very shortly, but in a nutshell, this is how it works. So there's a short patient form involved. That can be submitted by the patient online or using reception flow if the patient walks in or calls practice. So we've discussed that a couple of times before. 86% of patients say that that form is easy or very easy to use. And with integrations with the clinical record, reception staff or any staff at the practice can use reception flow to capture that exact same information in just a few clicks. That means that all patient triage requests can truly be treated in the same needs-based way, making sure that they receive the care that they really need. Secondly, patient requests funnel into that powerful inbox that we discussed. Um, so with seamless integrations with the patient record, as well as interoperability with our other Accurex features, you can triage all of your patients in one place, supporting efficient workflows and improved staff and patient experience. You also have access to powerful data dashboards customizable settings and other features within the settings page where you'll be able to track, plan and manage your inbound demand, reclaiming that control of your practice capacity. Essentially, what it does is streamlines those multiple contact points, as we've discussed before, and makes it funnel all into one place, which is way more easier to manage when you actually think about it compared to like very disjointed ways of recording requests. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Reception Flow, and we're calling it our best kept secret, and I'll tell you why. So up until recently, this has been a very mini feature within Accurex Patient Triage um, that allows practice staff to submit, obviously, requests on behalf of patients. But little did we know that our users, as creative as they are, they've been using it as a key to uh, unlock total triage models at their practice. Currently, it's being used by over 500 practices nationally to submit requests on behalf of walk-in patients as well as over the phone. Uh, that improves record keeping in just a, a few clicks. Um, we do call it reception flow, but as you mentioned, Johan, anyone at the practice can submit requests this way and not just re receptionists. And we've actually got some new exciting up for reception flow, um, which we'll share very shortly. So Johan, how critical would you say reception flow is to your practice? And what would you say is the biggest benefit of that? I think so. It's essential. So reception flow actually enables everything to be put in one palette. So whether it comes, whatever channel it comes to. Now, what we've started doing is putting urgent emails in there as well, because as a duty doctor, when you're busy and you're being pulled in so many different directions, um, what you want to do is have one easy place to see everything that you need to see. So in the beginning of the day, there might be five urgents that are face-to-face, -face, unwell patients that you need to see. And suddenly an email comes through at 11 o'clock saying, and it's an urgent email. And what everybody's able to do is two things. So that email can be added via reception flow. And a receptionist can then mark that as urgent. So everybody can contribute from, from when the beginning of the story starts or the beginning of the conversation starts all the way to the clinician at the end. And that's so important. So the idea that a lot of multiple people can collaborate on one box is really key. So the idea that there is only one person dealing with this issue is not the case anymore. Actually, your conversation about a clinical query starts from the very beginning a, a patient gets in touch with you. It enables and empowers reception to have an input. So just say they have a very vulnerable patient that I may not know because they're known to another GP, but that reception knows that they're particularly vulnerable. They're able to put the query in. They're able to then add a note through workflow in, 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 in the inbox to say, please, can you contact urgently? Can you phone them or text them rather than 
you know, any other means because the receptionist knows the patient. Um, and then they're able to mark it urgent because the patient's called four times already or called yesterday mm -hmm. and they're really struggling to get through or they've not, we've been missing contact with them. So it's just, it's so critical because for the patient, it's seamless. Mm -hmm. Whether they go online, they phone or they come face to face, whilst it's different for the receptionist that records the query, it's no different for the patient. It means they're going to engage with it more. They're going to be more compliant with it. And you talked about channels in the past. So if they came in by face-to-face -face or telephone and it's it's then recorded by receptionists, our reception team, re receptionist team are fantastic. They will then do a little bit of education at that time, and it's called channel switching. So if they've used a telephone or face-to-face -face before, we then do a little bit of, you know, the, the receptionist will say, I'm going to fill out the form for you, but did you know you can do it yourself? And the little secret that I didn't know about until a couple of weeks ago was the fact that they can do it via the NHS app. So some patients complain that they have to fill out their name, date of birth and all of that over and over again. If they do it via the NHS app, which we're promoting for repeat prescriptions and so on, they can just click a button and they can send a request into us and it's really easy for them. So it's a good way of being able to channel switch and move volume from telephones face to face over to the online form and then filling it out themselves. But reception flow is critical. Yeah, and just on NHS app, we will be showing the demo. Actually, it's coming up now. Um, so um, we will show the, the NHS app integrations and things as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But this is just a quote from Dr. Amar Ahmed, who is a GP partner and trainer at Wilmslow Health Centre uh, himself. And Johan, actually, uh, as well as other amazing practice staff from across England, got together and brainstormed at Accurex HQ some training materials specific for total triage. Um, Johan, do you mind sharing that experience a little bit more, like what you got up to and how you found it? It was brilliant. I mean, so it's really un unlike general practice. So it was a hack day that I was invited to. So uh, a unique day that you guys do regularly where teams can move from their normal day job and solve problems. And I think the one thing that's really, I, I think really resonates with me is that um, coming to Accurex, it, it's really clear that you guys are here to try and help us solve our problems or enable us to find solutions to those problems. And the fact is that you appreciate that the problems are evolving. So our biggest pain point is not the increase. Yes, it is the increase in patient demand, but actually right now is trying to adhere to this contract from NHS England. You're here with us trying to tackle that problem. And that was fantastic. Although we were here for patient triage, I was able to talk to the AccuMail team because that's another thing that really helps with us in terms of workflow. I was able to do that on the day, which was brilliant, and kind of come up with ideas that's really going to help us manage sort of emails, results, and correspondence coming from, from hospital. So really enjoyed the day and to be able to actually positively influence a product and see those changes now, not wait six months or a year for those changes to happen. It's fantastic. That's really great. And those training materials that you worked on, we should hopefully have them available in uh, the follow up email that we'll send to all registrants. I'm now going to move over to our demo. So I may have to stop sharing for a little second. OK, uh, so this is a demo that's hosted on uh, a site called Arcade. This is how we create our interactive demos. You might have seen them on our website here and there. Uh, the benefit of this is that you can actually click around and play around with the demo uh, or with the product itself just to see how it works and get a proper feel for it. Um, again, if you don't have access to patient triage, you can head over to our website, www.accurex.com forward slash patient dash triage. Um, and then you can also sign up for a three month free trial just to get an idea of what that looks like for your practice. We'll go through the patient form now as if we were a patient submitting an online request by ourselves. So once a patient clicks on uh, your patient triage form, they'll come to this page where you'll be able to um, confirm that the practice that you're contacting is the correct one on the top left corner. Um, and then you'll also be able to see a splash message over here, which will give a little bit more information around what to expect in terms of response timeframes. This is all customizable by the practice. So you can add as much or as little information here as you need. Um, I know, Johan, at your practice, you add some key updates in there or some expectations around receiving a response and things like that. Absolutely. So uh, it is all quite configurable. Um, if we head on down to submit a medical request for this example, you will also see that there's other options for admin query, 
patients can also see online advice, which will take them to the NHS website where they can navigate their symptoms, or they can refer themselves to local self-referral services. You can, again, customize any referral services that you'd like to signpost to your patients so they can access that through here. And you'll also see, I did mention the NHS login. Patients can actually skip some steps of the form, particularly the patient information part of the form by logging in with their NHS login details. It's secure, it's fast. All they need to do is just log in with that and then they can submit the request pretty simply. So if we move on and try and submit a medical request, we're first asked to confirm we don't have any of these red flag symptoms. We will have to confirm that none of these are present, otherwise we won't be able to continue with the form. And then here's where we can enter the details around our uh, medical issues. So the, the free text form consists of five questions. Some of them are optional, and then you also have the option to attach photos to uh, supplement your request. So we'll fill this form out now. So we'll talk about a sore back. Again, I said you can attach a photo, up to five photos to this request. So to do this, patients need to go through a flow where they can confirm that this is an appropriate photo and is relevant for the query, and then they can go ahead and upload. And then if we move on, you'll see that there's other questions that we get we respond to here. These are uh, quite straightforward questions. And um, do you have any comments, Johanna, particularly about like the straightforwardness or the the how how comprehensive these are and how key the information is that you're receiving? Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it's worthwhile doing a head-to-head -head with other products here because there are more detailed online forms. Um, what are the benefits of those detailed online forms? Potentially with more detail, you're able to action things without needing to speak to the patient and send them a message back to say, hey, here's a prescription. It's waiting at your pharmacy. Um, we really need to contextualize that benefit, actually, because those cases are the minority. And if you're going to implement a system, you should implement it for the rule, not the exception. And I think that's very much the exception. It's a very small percentage. And the opportunity gained by that is very small. And what is it? You know, it's a fungal infection. Here's a picture of it. It looks like ringworm. I've sent a cream across. So I don't, that's a two minute conversation or a minute conversation top. So I don't think the opportunity gained by having a very detailed form is important. What is the game changer here? What's the most important thing? It's getting people to do this once, do this twice, do this three times this being the only method that they want to contact you because then it reduces demand down in reception. Um, it's easy for reception to fill out. The compliance of using the form is much easier. And if you've got a receptionist that's doing it on behalf of their patient, remember your receptionist has 20 other calls in the waiting queue, you know, at 8 a.m. So it's so important for, the, for it to be really quick for them to fill out as well. Yeah, so that's with the simplicity of the form. Hopefully you'll make it easy for, uh, for patients to fill out. The next step, once uh, patients complete their information around their medical issue, uh, is where the patient can submit details around themselves. So um, you'll see here that patients can this request on behalf of themselves or for someone else. That option is really useful when you're filling in the form on behalf of someone who's not able to access the form for whatever reason, either they're a child or they're very elderly or something else. Um, so you can submit by proxy here. We'll go ahead and submit on behalf of ourselves. So here's me just uh, filling out these forms with some test patients details. Um, we'll enter the mobile number and confirm that we have access to this phone right now. What this does is it sends a two-factor authentication code. So a six-digit code will get sent via text message, which you can then import in the following page and then uh, verify your identity this way. We use this mobile number to uh, match with NHS Spine, and that's how it will come into your inbox as a matched patient. The final step is to review your request, essentially. So here you'll be able to see all of the details you put into the form. You'll be able to go back if you need to, and then you can submit your contact preferences and also request a confirmation text. And then once you're done with that, you can click submit request and there you have it. So that's the patient journey when submitting that request. Uh, you'll have some information on the screen here around what to expect next. Again, this is all customizable by the practice. So you can give your expectations to your patients here. Really quickly, I just wanted to show what that same experience might look like if someone was to walk in or maybe call the practice. So this is a receptionist's view of doing exactly the same thing, so submitting a request. What you'd need to do firstly is open up the patient that has either called in or come to the practice in your clinical system. So the benefit of patient triages is that it's fully integrated with your clinical system. So in this example, we're using EMIS. It works in exactly the same way with system one. You open up the patient in your clinical system, and then you will click on the Accurex inbox icon on the toolbar. Once you've done that, an option should appear on the bottom left-hand corner of the inbox. 
that has the patient that's currently opened in your clinical system. And you'll see just under here, there's a button that says create patient triage request. That will allow you to create a quick request on behalf of that patient. You'll be able to ask them if this is a admin query or medical issue, quite kind of like the, the patient facing form. Again, we'll submit a medical request. We'll have to, again, check that it's not an emergency. So walk through um, either over the phone or in, in person these um, symptoms and confirm that none of these are present. And then we can ask the patient these questions. So again, five questions. Uh, some of them are optional. And then we can click next once we've filled that form up. The next uh, stage is, again, to submit information about the patient. Because of our integrations with the clinical system, this is all already pulled through. All you need to do is confirm the best contact number if this request is indeed for that patient. Again, very similar to the patient flow where you can review your request, select a, a contact method for that uh, patient. And one more thing that you can do here is assign that request immediately to your team. So that's a new feature that we, in the last few weeks, I'd say, or possibly even last week, two weeks ago, I think, <laughs> we've released the ability for you to be able to assign that request directly to a team. So that will cut out that extra time that you would have taken to go back to the inbox and then manually assign that. So you can do that as you're doing the reception flow request. And then all you need to do is click on submit. And then that request is submitted. After that, head over to your inbox and action it as you would normally. I will show you part of the inbox flow, but I won't go through all of it because, again, I will share this out with all registrants. So you can actually click through yourself and uh, read through and discover the different features that are available. But to access the inbox, all you need to do is click on the inbox icon once again and then click on to assign, which will show you all of the requests that come through to your practice. This is all patient triage requests submitted by the patients themselves and reception flow. So all of your inbound is being funneled into the exact same place. You can actually filter those requests by admin and medical, which might be useful if you, for example, have a workflow where the duty doctor is looking at ad, uh, medical requests and the receptionist or admin team are looking at admin requests. So quite customizable in terms of how you can work. And then once you click on a request, you'll see that there are various options here. So you can save to the record with one click. You can reply directly to the patient using our integrated features such as self-book or flurries or two-way messaging. You can send attachments such as sick note or request more information from, from the patient. You can also send a self-book link to this patient. So if you find that a patient will need to actually book in, you can click on add a self-book link, select an appointment type, and select a slot type existing within your appointment book to um, have that patient book in from their end at a time that suits them. Once they do click on that link, they'll be able to book uh, within seven days. So the link is valid for seven days. They'll be automatically added into your appointment book and they'll be able to book up to six weeks in advance. So this is really useful for triaging efficiently. If you, if you do decide that this patient needs an appointment, you can cut out the time instead of giving them an appointment by default. Um, and guessing when they might be available, you can just send that through to them and have the, the onus on the patient choosing a convenient time for them. So that's patient triage in a nutshell, and that's how the inbox works. Again, if there are any questions on that, please feel free to type it up in the Q&A section. I'm just going to head back over to my slides. Once again, we'll send you that interactive demo in the follow-up email. So how can Accurex support you? As you've seen in the demo, our solution is fully comprehensive. With an inbox loaded with lots of different tools, you're able to appropriately triage those requests in a timely manner. With our interoperability with self-book and flurries within the inbox, you've got actions that are just a click away, basically. Our software philosophy is very much around simple, modern technology balanced with human intuition. So that's why we support all patient inbound, irrespective of whether they were submitted by the patient or the practice. So we're trying to make the experience better for both parties. And finally, we're user and patient centered. We offer lots of resources for practice staff and patients, including case studies, best practices, training, and posters to even put up at your practice so that your patients are aware of how to contact the practice and how to use Accurex. Our priorities continue to be with the patient and practice experience, and that's why our form remains simple and easy to use with standardized questions that you mentioned earlier. And I guess that's also why there is that comparison with other solutions on the market where um, some forms may be asking for a lot more detail or navigating patients through different pages, which can be tiring. So this is a very simple solution. 
hopefully if you do try it out you also think the same do you have any any other comments i do so i mean let's look at that example of summer mm -hmm. um and let's ask questions at the right time if it were another solution that had a detailed online form whether it's a simple re repeat prescription request or whether it's something more complex like lower back pain for the first time that does need to be explored with other solutions, they're getting asked the same degree of questions, and sometimes it doesn't really need that. So this actually appropriately asks patients the questions, or you've got the option to ask further questions where it's really appropriate. So the example of Samar, sore lower back, well, I can now send them a flurry text messages to, to fill out more questions. And that asks them about red flags, asks them all the questions I would otherwise do on the phone, saves me about 30 seconds of a phone call, probably a minute, even more. If I'm triaging that to start with, if I see some red flags, I'm going to call them straight away. If I don't see red flags and it does, and it seems like your typical muscular back pain, I may then say, actually, look, let's wait and see what happens. I'll refer you to physio or let's bring you in for a face to face appointment. So it helps you triage straight away and you can ask the questions when it's needed, not just all the time. And there again, there's not going to be that fatigue that patients sometimes have. And I think that's super important. So I think in terms of the actual product itself it works with other things within so your flurries and your messaging the one thing i've got to say is whatever other product you're using you're probably going to send a text message via accurex so why not have everything in one product and um, I, I say you know that i know that sounds like a joke but the reason why that's so important is when you have these conversations that are built within accurex it's in one screen so the conversation's in one screen so you can see that it came in at this time Someone added a note at this time, which is internal. It doesn't get saved to the record. You sent a message and you couldn't contact them at whatever time. Now, it's good because if I come off shift and I'm no longer duty, but that query is still ongoing to the next day, that doctor doesn't need to trawl through notes. They can just go to the conversation and see what's happened at the time that it's happened. Now, at the other end, so I'm the partner that deals with complaints with our practice manager since implementing the process, there's been less complaints, but actually it's made it so much easier to understand what's happened with a clinical encounter because we have to go back and we can see the timestamp. So from a management perspective, it really, really does help. And it just makes sense. And can okay. I also say, yeah, of well? course. I think something that's really good about the simplicity of, of the form is that we want to strike the sweet spot for clinicians having enough information to triage, but not being burdened by too much information such that you don't ever read it. Because yeah. I know that I've definitely worked in places where there's been like two or three pages of information and I just, I don't have time. So actually, you, it's almost like you have nothing. So in this way, you get the right information. You can decide if you want to send a flurry. And, and that's where we start to see some of the gains of total triage. Because for me, I think the efficiency is an asynchronous communication. So what can I get the patient to fill out and get more information on whilst I'm doing something else? It just seems a shame that when you only have maybe 10 or 15 minutes with the doctor, they spend the first five or 10 minutes recounting everything that you could have already picked up somewhere else. Um, and then you only have five minutes to actually examine them, build that rapport and deal with the issue. Whereas actually now we're creating a bit more time for those clinicians who really are into that patient care, that softer touch, really dealing with sort of human needs. I definitely think Accurate gives clinicians the opportunity to do that better. Yeah, just to add to that as well, it's not just for the clinicians also, but for the wider practice staff. I mean, Johan, you also mentioned that receptionists that receive requests over the phone they <laughs> tend to know who the patient is. They develop a rapport with them. They know exactly who which clinician is already working with that patient, for example. So you still get the benefits of the traditional model with Accurate. It's just a way to digitize it and make sure that it's simpler to, to keep track of so you can look back at it with more ease. So I think, you know, the thinking that we're in now, our philosophy now is that we used to have a reception team and, and a triage team. Actually, now we've just got one team and that's our duty team, which includes the reception team all the way to GPs. So that's really important. I think the point that you make about asynchronous messaging and communication is so important. So at 8 a.m., not all your urgents are calling in. Someone might be calling in because it's the most convenient time on the way to work to book their smear test. And what would happen is that patient would call they'll speak to a receptionist they'll be holding up other people on the phone and the receptionist is trying to find an appointment for them now what we can do is say okay we're going to create a triage request that will go to a team the team can check whether they're due for a smear and then send out the self-book link that may normally may not come to the reception team but we'll hold the phone up we'll take minutes to do and they'll have to find the right appointment now the patient can do the work and find their own appointment so it doesn't just help with the reactive requests. It helps with proactive stuff that you're trying to do as well, getting people in for reviews. So I, I think that's why it's a solution that really fits both models.
I just wanted to run through some exciting feature updates that we've been working on to improve our experience for users. Woohoo! Um, so the first one, improved visibility of who is, who's actually replying to a request. So if you've already got someone within your practice that's working on a request, you now are able to see if they are typing a message just so that you're not sort of writing two messages at once. Yeah. Uh, how does that sound? <laughs> yeah, you know, sorry to interrupt. I mean, no. we used to do triage in two different rooms. So myself and Dr. Moros, who's a legend of triage and a legend of general practice, we used to work in two different clinic rooms and I'll be working from the top. And by the time I've read the message, Dr. Moros has just done it and she's actioned it because she knows the patient. She's <laughs> awesome. And I kind of think like, okay, we're, it's, and then we try to say, okay, I'll start from the top, you start from the bottom. But to be able to know when it's yeah. already on someone else's workflow, that's brilliant. Yeah, so that's now live. So you should be able to see that within the inbox. I don't know, Johan, if you've ever accidentally marked a request as done before, <laughs> and then it just poof, disappeared. Um, so we've and actually- done. Yeah, literally to see uh, yeah, literally it just disappeared and you'd have to manually go through an, a, a separate inbox where all of the archive requests are and then find your request and then reopen it. That doesn't happen anymore. You'll be glad to know. So now when you accidentally mark a request as done, it doesn't disappear from your screen. So you can click reopen and then have it back. So if you if you do get a bit trigger finger, don't worry, uh, that should hopefully help. And finally, we've got some updates with reception flow. So like I showed in the, in the demo, you can assign requests directly to a team. We're also making some other changes with the interface to reception flow. So keep an eye out over the next coming weeks um, just to make it more prominent and more easy to use for, for all users. So um, I guess uh, a question for, for Johan, how was your journey with implementing total triage at your practice? I mean, was it quite easy to transition to the model? Did it take some time? What kind of resources were you using? So I think we made it up as we went along. I think this is the most important bit. So we made it up as we went along. We made some mistakes. You know, we did a soft launch. We should have really done a hard launch and just switched straight away because we opened up too many boxes and too many channels. So there's a lot of stuff that we learned and a lot of mistakes that we made, but we've improved upon. Um, we have the philosophy is that we want to improve quickly. So if something is not working today, let's try and think about how we're going to tackle that tomorrow or in the next week or the next two weeks. Yeah. And I would say the, the benefit of this really is that probably we see the accurate support team as an extension of our GPIT, actually probably much more responsive than, than, than GPIT. So for example, um, we wanted to create a new team for letters and reports because it was clogging up the assigned box mm -hmm. and they didn't need to be dealt with there. And then um, I'll send a message on the chat and literally within minutes, a new team is created and I'm workflowing it to the new team. And I think the thing is, if you want to be a dynamic practice in order to con continue to iterate, continue to change the model, you need your technology to be equally responsive. Um, the example that you just pointed out about being able to assign to a team directly from triage, that's a real pain point for us. So a month ago, we would get medical queries, maybe repeat prescriptions all within that flow. And now that our receptionist can assign directly to prescribing, it doesn't clog up our assigned box. So we're able to see what the most urgent bits are on the day. So I think great. it's iterations like that that make a difference. Really great, thank you. So how can you find out more? As I mentioned before, if you wanna find out more about patient triage, head over to our website. You can also scan this QR code, or there is also a link on the slide there to visit our Total Triage specific help center article that will give you more of a roundup about what uh, Total Triage is and how you can start using reception flow to start receiving requests from walk-in and telephone patients. If you want any support with training and implementation, please reach out to customer.success at accurex.com. Uh, our implementation team will be able to support you with any queries that you might have. Um, and if you have any technical issues, go onto any page of our website on the bottom right hand corner. You should see a little chat bubble icon. Just click on that and that will start a live chat with our friendly, amazing support team. And you should receive a response within five minutes. If you do want to purchase any of the Accurex products that we've shown today, please feel free to contact partnerships at accurex.com. But I just wanted to take uh, a couple of minutes I know we've got 10 minutes left just to go through some questions so please feel free to type them up in the Q&A section below and I'm just going to have a look through to see if there's any we can answer um, and, and get Johan and Margaret involved. A user said when we tried the sheer volume of requests coming through often about trivia still had to be trawled through patients didn't realize that their requests were actually having to be read by a human how can we deal with this? What you notice is that 
initially you're trying to cross that chasm from early adopters to the majority using it, then you do get surplus, you know, and you get some ridiculous comments. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to completely eliminate those requests. But the one thing is, is that actually that does normalize. So I think there is a peak before it normalizes and comes back down to a happy medium. All I would say is that those requests may have otherwise come via the phone, and it doesn't need to be a GP that needs to respond to that. So we've got a fantastic, I can't express it, and we've got a fantastic reception team that know patients, know sometimes what's been happening to them within the week, especially if it's an urgent issue. So the only thing I would encourage is that once you've made the transformational change to total triage and you found a solution that works with you, an IT solution that works with you, the next step is to try and look for transactional savings. So who else can come into the team that's really, really going to take it on? And I've got to say that it's not a, a GP thing that's really good or a clinical pharmacist that's really good or a receptionist that's really good. Mm -hmm. There are individuals that just have these innate qualities about them that they're naturally inquisitive. So they look at a request, they look at the record. So all I would say is introduce this to your whole team, give them a chance to sit with you and shadow you and sit next to you whilst you're triaging. Mm -hmm. And you'll actually find some, some real gems of people that can come in and get involved in that team. I think when it becomes inappropriate, what you're able to do straight away is you're able to push back and signpost back. So the typical one we get is I saw my consultant yesterday for a, last week for a colonoscopy. I want the results. And we now have a templated message where we say, you know, hospital investigations ordered by hospitals um, will be given back to you by the consultant. And so you can template that response and send it back to them. So I think there's no way of eliminating that all the time. There wasn't a way of eliminating it before it simply got filtered out and patients got fatigued. So it didn't come to you so much. So um, I don't think there's going to be a complete way of stopping that, but there is a quicker way of dealing with that. Yeah, there definitely is an adjustment period where yeah. there's like a spike in inbound, but then as you continue to get familiar with the, the product and are more efficiently managing those requests and figure out your workflows, it definitely does become easier. And we do provide lots of resources and case studies that will help you along that journey, as well as the new ones that we just created. So. Well, no, Hopefully they'll be useful. Sorry, I just want to go back to the dashboard. So I would encourage people not to switch it off, not to, because if you if you keep it on throughout the time that you're live in the practice, so you're open from eight to six thirty, what you're able to do is actually see through the dashboard when your peaks and troughs are in terms of activity. So it will give you a real idea. Uh, you know what you always knew you Mondays were really busy but how much busier was a Monday than a Tuesday right. you can now put numbers to that and that's super important and you can see through the day where your peaks and activity are and where the, where the rest breaks are as well it helps you staff accordingly definitely uh, we have a user asking what your practice list size is and how many receptionists you have yeah eight and a half uh, we used to have between two and three receptionists we're now able to go down to two receptionists for the majority of the day and even towards the quiet bits able to have just one one receptionist um just dealing with dealing with the phone so there has been a reduction in the number of receptionists needed we're eight thousand five hundred patients okay that's great. It's also worth noting that we have practices of all list sizes. So uh, from 3,000 to 15,000 using reception flow. So I, I think uh, if there are any concerns about like what is the ideal list size for a total triage model to actually really be effective, I, I think the answer, correct me if I'm wrong, Margaret, um, is that there, I don't think there is like a sweet spot. I mean, it's very much up to your practice to be able to push through and continue with those workflows and then see the benefits after time. Sorry, I was going to say, if you're asking um, about what model suits my, suits my list size, mm -hmm. I think you're asking the wrong question. And I'll be on. The reason is, is that you need your model to be scalable and adaptable. Yeah. So we know it's not in the real world, you know, practice mergers are occurring. And when a merger occurs, you don't want to have to then completely overhaul your model again. Yeah. So with this model, whether we're 3,000 and we have one receptionist and half a day of triage, doctor triaging, or as we've got at the moment, we've got eight, eight and a half thousand patients. We've got two duty doctors that triage staggered through the day. We've got a receptionist working and I've described how our reception uh, staffing pattern is at the moment. So if we were to grow by an extra couple of thousand patients, all you need to do is just add numbers to the team. Mm -hmm. You don't need to change the model. You don't need to change processes. So I think my hopefully the answer to your question is does this is this solution scalable and adaptable for low volume patient for low volume practices and low patient numbers 
or is it ad and adaptable for high patient numbers and, and practices? Absolutely. One last question, perhaps the, the final one is a juicy one, uh, maybe for both Johan and Margaret. Um, our GPs really don't like the idea of triaging. Oh no. They see this as making hundreds of clinical decisions a day, as opposed to the appointment book of X per session. How do you manage the workload or expectations for clinicians? I think the way that our triage is structured is really nice. So firstly, you're never alone. So we're in, so I wish I brought a photo. So we're in one room together that's on the top floor. So it's away from all the noise of the clinic rooms. Um, there's four desks there, four computers and two duty doctors. So there are, so I, I completely get about clinical fatigue. I think what you need to do as a practice in terms of systems, and we do this is if there is a very busy day, you need to send a message out via your website and say clinical capacity has been reached for urgent queries. And that's absolutely fine within the contract, because I think the contract really looks for you to be able to give a patient a disposition rather than say, call back. So if it's an urgent query that needs urgent attention and you've got no more capacity, you need to at least signpost to them where they can get that urgent need met. It doesn't mean you need to see it just because you've kept triage open. So there is some fatigue. Doing it together, doing it as a team makes it much, much easier. It means when I'm going for a low point during the day, just after I've had a heavy lunch, I've got another GP that's able to carry on okay. and that's able to steam through. So I think don't do it in isolation, do it together um, is my key feature uh, through that. And in terms of clinical decision-making, remember triage isn't solving the problem. It's literally triaging. So what does that mean? Right time? right place, right person. Mm -hmm. Is it urgent or is it not urgent at the right time? If it's urgent, it's on my workload. If it's not urgent, we're going to find a way to push it back. Uh, right place essentially means modality. Mm -hmm. So is it going to be a face-to-face, -face, a telephone or a text message back? And the right person. So is it a GP? Is it a nurse, our HCA? Is it our clinical pharmacist team? Those are the three questions you're really asking yourselves in terms of triage. If you're asking more questions than that for the majority of the patients that you're seeing, you're not triaging, you're consulting. Right. That's the difference here. So, um, yeah, that's why I would say there, don't worry about the fatigue. I think just it's it's important for you to kind of redefine what you mean by triaging. Great. Thanks very much. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, I completely agree with, with Johan. I think he's definitely spot on. So I think the thing is, with when, when you're going on the total triage journey you need to do it together so i think if there are gps or other clinicians who are not sure i think you need we need to spend time to talk about it because i think at the end of the day people need to be on board before you make such a drastic decision and to me doing this work is not too dissimilar from being a duty doctor except for the fact that you have more tools and i think if you if you use your most confident and your best triages um yeah charges first then they will be able to help everybody else build confidence that this model works and then those people who are less confident or not sold can over time work on it that's really useful we also do have a facebook page dedicated to patient triage so i'll be sharing a link to that which you can join that's basically a support group with lots of different users across the country that ask for advice provide advice share resources share best practices so if you are interested in finding out more about how to actually implement it and push through that initial busy period then you can you can definitely check that out and sign up for that page and you also see some frequently asked questions on the page. We, we do have answers for that. I will share those with you in the follow-up email. I'm just conscious of time. So I guess what's left to say is thank you. Thank you to everyone involved in this keynote, uh, all of the people behind the scenes, behind the camera that are answering away at the questions. So thank you very much. Uh, the biggest thank you to you, Dr. Johan Byron. Um, it's been great for having you, really insightful and really appreciate you coming with us on this journey to find out what total triage actually is and how we can actually support practices moving over to that way. Again, thank you, Margaret. This was a last minute uh, addition and you, I think you, you did the role perfectly. Um, and finally, we want to just say thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for registering. Uh, thank you for um, being curious about total triage. We can we can send you some of the training and resources that we've created after this uh, keynote. Um, please feel free to share that out with anyone else that you think might be interested in it. And hopefully you can supercharge your inbound demand management using our simple but powerful software. So there you go. We'll, we'll end it today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.